2, verses 21 through 24. That's page 1611, if you're using the divine, the divine King James today. 1 Peter, and we'll read through 25, as we did earlier. And he says, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his foots or his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. Who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Our Father, we do thank you for the privilege of prayer. Thank you we can boldly come before the throne of grace and cast our cares upon you, knowing that you care for us. I do pray for the Ruckman family this morning, for Micaiah, for the physicians. God, I pray that they might be able to give them some help. God, I pray, God, they might be able to uh, encourage their family. I pray, God, that you might uh, gird them with strength and make their way perfect. I pray, God, that you might manifest yourself. Lord, I do ask you, God, you do it. Now, Father, here today, in this place, we're asking for you to meet with us. Lord, your presence, your power. Lord, we're asking, God, that your people might get something from God this morning. I pray, God, now, Lord, that we're just a handful of number, it looks like, today. There's a few that are not here. I pray, God, that you might uh, help them in whatever their uh, endeavor was today, whatever it might be. God, I pray, God, you would help them. Uh, Lord, let them know that we miss them. God, I pray you do it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So, we looked at this, the idea here today is that uh, we are to be imitators of Christ. Imitators of Christ. And that's page 1611, that's uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. He said that we are to, uh, we're called that you should follow his steps. And so as imitators of Christ, how should we imitate Christ maybe? We found out why we find ourselves in this condition is we were made after the image of God originally. God, man was made in his image after the image of God, made him male and female, made he them. Then we find uh, not only that, but that Adam sinned. After Adam sinned, we were made in the likeness of Adam, in his image. We were made in his image. Now you say, uh, not directly, indirectly, because there was Seth, and then there was Seth's kids with Sam, Sam, and Japheth, and then it went on down, and, and we come through one of those, or, or uh, intertwined somewhere along the line, we come through those three young men. And somewhere on down the line, it ended up with your parents, or my parents, and then we came along. And all of the sinfulness, and all of the sorrows, and all of the DNA crossings, that went across have caused us to be in the image that we were made. Our looks because of what that because of that. Our actions, our tendencies, our tendencies. Let me say not our actions. Our actions are our choices. Our tendencies in one direction or another because of that. And so if you want to blame somebody else because you're not a big enough boy or big enough girl to say take blame for some Listen, blame somebody else. That's what Adam did. It's the first thing people want to do is blame. It's not my fault that I'm like this. I can't, can't behave myself. I can't do right. I tell you, if you are not mentally retarded, or I don't, they don't use that word anymore. I'm sorry. I don't know the uh, mentally handicapped or however, or, or child, or, you know, we're all mentally challenged. But if, you, if there's no reason that you, if you consider yourself a normal person, a regular person, and do not claim to have be mentally deficient, then let me just say this. Do not tell me that you cannot behave yourself as you ought to behave yourself. Don't tell me you can't quit cussing, you can't quit this, and you can't quit that. Don't tell me you can't quit. 
if you have all the mental capacities. Now, if you want to tell me you're mentally incapable of this, then let me say, then you need to be under somebody else's watch care. You, you need to be under that somebody else's watch care. Let me just say that. You should not be your own person. Now, that being said, what I'm trying to get you to understand is we are made in the image of our biological parents. But then we find that not only that, but as a Christian, we are made in the image of Christ, in the image of God. We are to imitate Him. He lives inside of us. We're called to this, that you should follow His steps. In 1 Peter 3, he says in verse number 13, he says, And who is he that will harm you? If ye be followers of that which is good. But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you and accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Now, I recently, in recent history, in the political scene, this, the, when I think of this portion of Scripture, I think of the example of the Vice President of the United States of America, Mr. Pence. And they were making fun of him and mocking him because he will not go to a private meeting with a woman. And uh, he will not go to a place that serves alcohol without miscarrying his dear wife with him. Now, whether you think he ought to ever go to a place that serves alcohol or not, that's not the debate here. He's saying, I will not put myself in a situation where it might be compromising. I'm going to do right, live right. I'm going to, the best I know how, I'm going to sanctify the Lord in my heart. And therefore, they might speak evil against me, but they won't have anything that they really can speak evil against me about. I mean, because I would ask how many wives want their men to be alone with other women? And I would have to say, not many. Not many. You could ask Mrs. Clinton. And uh, you could ask Mrs. Trump. You could ask Mrs. Kennedy. Well, you can't ask Mrs. Kennedy. And uh, now I don't know about the relationships that these men have with their wives. But I do know this, that a wife does not like sharing her husband. And uh, that is a sad situation. But Mr. Pence said, I'm not going to put myself in a compromising situation. What happens? They make fun of him. They mock him. They ridicule him. They say he can't control himself. And listen... He didn't put himself in a situation where he has to control himself. He, may, he said, I'm drawing the line so far away that I won't worry about falling off that uh, cliff there. I'm not worried about it. It is like the three uh, racers, chariot racers, who were out to race and want the king's uh, daughter to marry the king's daughter, I think it was. And here they are, chariot racers, and he said, whoever can get the close, go fastest and get the closest to that edge of that uh, that cliff without going over, he said, you get my daughter. And that first one gets over there and said, woohoo, yeah. And she's a pretty old girl too. So he's not the horses that were running the territory. I'm talking about the, wife, the daughter. But he's sitting there getting that horses going and he's running along there and he's coming around the curve and he's over there and he gets about, oh, about a foot and a half from the edge and slides around there and he said, woo, buddy. And he, he stays alive. He said, yeah, I'm going to marry her. That second one got up there and he said, oh, yeah. And he said, he's got that horses going. He got that cherry going. And they said he got probably within a, oh, we're right on the edge. As a matter of fact, it looked like he was about to go over and kept that thing going. And he said, whoo, 
I'm getting her to wife. And that third one said, they said, well, you're going to get out there and do yours. It's going to be tough. He said, okie dokie. And he got out there, got them horses going, got them at a nice steady pace, not running too fast, but running fairly fast. And he stays about three or four feet away from the edge there. And he comes around and moves around there. And, and he comes on back there. And there's no sweat, no stress. He just comes back and checks his stuff on the horses. And they said, you didn't even try. He said, I want to be alive to marry her. He said, them guys won't be married to her very long to keep acting like that. They're going to put themselves in so much trouble. They're going to put themselves in trouble because they keep playing with danger. Or not be playing with it. They ought, not be, they ought to be ashamed because they'll be falsely accusing our good conversations. We ought to be, we ought to be imitating Christ. We ought to suffer without complaining. He did, not com he did not complain, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. We ought to suffer without complaint. Whether we did everything right, if we did it right and they still give us a hard time, we ought to be willing to say, I'll take it. When they make fun of you and mock you because you start trying to tell them sin is sin or you don't go to this place or you don't go to that place, or you don't have this, you don't do that, and they give you a hard time about it, you ought to be able to say, hey, it's all right. I'm committing myself to God. They are going to give you a hard time. They are going to make fun of you. They are going to mock you. If you make a stand for Christ, that all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It might not be today, but there's going to be a time in your life where they're going to have to speak evil of you or do something wrong to you. In my personal life, I remember losing my job because I would not haul liquor. I lost a job because I would not haul liquor. Had family got mad at me because I would not buy liquor. I mean, I refused to. Back right after I got saved, I bought some, and I told them they had to have a lot of Cokes and stuff at the, and all at a party. And my family, I had family that was giving me a hard time because of the fact that here I was just trying to, I was trying to appease them. I didn't know them a whole lot better at the time. I didn't know the verses in the Bible. But I just knew, well, there's going to be, I don't want everybody to think that they have to drink. And so I went and wanted to buy some cold cokes and stuff like that and, and have them in a, in, a, in a cooler outside. And guess what? I had family members getting upset with me. I'm like, what are you making? I'm, it's not that I'm not trying to be a blessing to you. I can get this stuff cheap. I was in the military. I, I could get it cheap because they didn't have to pay taxes on the base. And my dad could have did it, but it was his birthday party. So here, what I'm saying is, I was trying to do and be a blessing to them, but I, I was saying, listen, there's some people who just not want to drink that stuff. Don't put them in bondage to where they feel like they got to go inside, go all the way, and make it hard to get a, a drink of something that's worth drinking. Now I'm not saying Coke and Pepsi's are worth drinking. Pepsi certainly isn't, but uh, that's beside the point. What I'm trying to get you to understand is they're going to be. You will have people that will turn on you and make fun of you and mock you and will quit hanging out with you just because you're living for God. Let me say, if somebody's living for God and loving God and wants to serve the Lord and you might not have the same exact highness of their standard or, you, or something like that or they might do something a little bit differently than you, don't just blow them off and get rid of them and say, hey, y'all are, are legalistic, narrow-minded. Love them. They'll come to reason and you'll come to reason. You'll figure out some of these things are not worth worrying about. Just love them and go on with God. Because every one of us, if we live for God long enough, and we, the more we live for Him, they're going to have these situations happen. There is suffering without complaint. He suffered. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself unto, to him that judges righteously. Take your complaints 
And instead of pouring them out to everybody else about how bad you're being treated, pour them out to the Lord. Don't be going out and saying, they can't do this to me. Well, I, they have no right to do this to me. And you'll say, well, I'm an American citizen. Let me say, Paul got thrown in prison, got beat, and, was, and they sat there and they were trying to let him out of prison when Paul finally said, you cannot do this legally, what you just did. They had broken the law against him. And this was the government that was broken, breaking the laws of their own government. And he said, you can't do this to me. I appeal to Caesar. That, it was a bigger thing than most people. Most people, when somebody says, you can't, you can't preach on this street corner. They say, I'll take you to court. Why don't you just preach on the street corner if you believe you ought to have the right to it? Let them throw you in jail. When they throw you in jail, and then they say, we're not going to take you to trial after they've held you in jail for three years old year or whatever. They say, we're not taking you to trial. We're not charging you with anything. We're just going to let you go. We've done proven our point. Then say, uh-uh, you have no choice but take me to trial. I want a jury of my peers. You have broken the law, your own laws. If you're going to enforce your laws, then enforce them. But don't play a game with me. That's what Paul told them. I appeal to Caesar. I have a right to, and you have broken your own laws. Therefore, it's not about us just trying to say, oh, I've got rights. You don't have rights. You have responsibilities. You have, I tell you what you have a right. You have the right to remain silent. Everything you say can and will be used against you. That's what they tell you when they arrest you. Everything. They'll sit there and say, we'll find something if you do this. We're looking. We only want to talk about our Bill of Rights. Can I say, if there was, they're not God-given rights, if there were God-given rights, everybody in the world would have them. They're constitutional rights that, are, that can protect our God-given rights. Because we have a right inalienable, or is it unalienable? Unalienable rights to life and liberty in pursuit of happiness. And unless we break the law and we, by due process of law, end up giving those rights up, we have those rights. But can I ask you this? Does that mean everybody has the right to have a million dollars? Well, they say that's what it takes me to make happy, be happy. Does that mean everybody has a right to the same thing somebody else has? They say that's what makes me happy. You have a right to happiness, but you've got to be happy within what you've got. Could you be happy being a slave? Say, so, I don't know. That's what the Bible is written to in 1 Timothy. He's writing to people who are in slavery, in bondage. And he, he, he's writing about Onesimus into Philemon. About, and, and, and he didn't tell Onesimus you had a right to walk away from him. He sent him back with the letter. He said, go back and serve. You don't, he said, be happy as a slave. You have a right. But more than rights, we have responsibilities. And therefore, when we suffer, who do we go and complain to? Don't complain to everybody out there. Don't even complain to the government. Complain to the one who is our master. Now, I am not saying don't call your congressman and tell them what you think they ought to do. You voted for them or didn't vote for them. It doesn't matter. I believe in being politically active. But I don't believe in being a political whiner. And there's a big difference. Suffer without complaint. Commit ourselves to Him that judges righteously. Not only that, but we ought to Imitate Christ by suffering without complaint. We've got to imitate Christ by being a witness to the law. In Matthew 4, which we will be in next week, back in the book of Matthew, it looks like, appears to me, where we're going to be back in the book of Matthew. He says in verse number 19, and he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Hmm. And they straightway left their nets, and followed him. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. That's page 1261 in your defined king. 
What I'm saying is, we ought to follow him by suffering without complaint. We ought to follow him by fishing for men, being witnesses to the Lord. We ought to go out and let people know. That's what he went about. He went about doing good. He went about, he didn't just feed the hungry, but he preached to them. He made sure to get people to follow him that they needed to understand. They turned their backs on him. He said, and, and he said, will you leave also? And they said, they said, thou hast the words of eternal life. Where shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. He said, some of them followed him because they wanted to see the miracles. Some of them followed him because they wanted to get fed. And the apostles, they followed him because he had the words of eternal life. And he wants us to go and tell people there's eternal life out there. There's nothing wrong with feeding. There's nothing wrong with doing miracles, if you can. Nothing wrong with using ministries to outreach to people. But if we do not give them a word of eternal life, then why should they stay with us? We got social clubs out there. We got a government that does social programs out there. Let me say, they can go anywhere and get social programs. When I try to tell them, they call me and they try to tell me they uh, need food. I say, okie dokie, I'm for food. Food, food and rain, and I'm for it. Then I tell them, say, i tell you what I can do. I might be able to get you enough to get you through a couple of days. I said, then come to church Sunday and I'll, I'll make sure I'll take you out and get, buy you some groceries. And they say, uh, uh, well, they don't show up. I say, you know, I ask them where they go to church at. When I'm talking to them, where do you go to church at? Well, I don't. I said, how long? Why not? Why do you call the church looking for things? We want to help you. But let me tell you about Jesus first. If they won't let me tell them about Jesus, then what am I doing? I'm going to feed them and let them go to hell? No way. We have a responsibility to follow Him Lay down our nets. Let, put away our nets. And go and follow Him and be fishers of men. Lay aside what you want out of life to follow Him. Matter of fact, did He not? Did He not leave everything? Did He not leave His home in heaven? Did he not leave the ivory palaces and come into this world of woe? Did he not do that? He says, I am the vine, he, and my father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh he he take away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it and may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Then he says, Abide in me. This is John chapter 15. And I and you as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except you abide in the vine. And uh, except you, no more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abide in me and I in him the same bringing forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. So we're to follow him and then we're to feed on him so that we can be witnesses. Let him work in us. Let Him give us the wisdom. Let Him guide us. We have to spend time with the Lord. That's what following Him means. That's what imitating Him means. Spending time. Spending time in prayer for souls. Spending time. Which brings me back to the bulletin. On the bulletin. Here it is. For the souls of Shelbyville. Pray for the salvation of souls in Shelbyville. That's on... The, the 12th, we're praying for that. We're praying for the power and presence of God in our services next Saturday. We're praying for our ministries. I mean, we're praying for the, those who have visited the church. Then we're praying one for another and then for our missionaries. It's all there. Prayer. How do you spend time with the Lord? How do you abide with Him? There's two ways. Feeding on His Word. And spending time in prayer. That's how we feed on Him. 
Meditating on Him. That's what prayer is. It's meditating. Spending time loving on Him. Living with Him. Enjoying the Lord. If we want to bear fruit, we must. We must. We must. Spend time with the Lord. Follow Him in witnessing the soul. Let me say, Mr. Brainerd went out to the American Indians. He stopped at a place where he offered to instruct them in Christianity. He was met by the retort, why should you desire the Indians to come to Christians or become Christians? Seeing that the Christians are more worse than the Indians. The Christians lie, steal, and drink worse than the Indians. He said they first taught the Indians to get drunk. Now this is what they think of Christianity. This is what the world thought of Christianity. When Mr. Brainerd, David Brainerd, was going to the Indians, they were telling him, why should the Indians want anything to do with you? These people came in in the name of Christianity and took and stole and did all these things. That was, that's not Bible Christianity. They, uh, David Brainerd went out and he served the Indians so that he could reach the Indians. But they're wondering, are they going to do the same thing last week? Quote, unquote, Christians did? All the church wants is money. Let me say, I'm for money. But I don't know how many times y'all have ever heard me say, give me, give me, give me. I work a full-time job so I can pay my bills. Now, I'm not against the man getting a shower from church. I believe you don't muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn. I believe that's good, it's right, it's biblical. But you can't spend your life. And that's what the world thinks. Oh, they just want us to come so we can give our money. I don't know asking for no money. They can come, come as you are, leave, leave different. You get right, you want to give. Hallelujah. That's simple. But humble ourselves now. So we find. What did we find him doing? We find the idea of our imitating Christ. We find it in the area of our suffering without complaining. Of our soul winning on purpose. And by humbling ourselves and serving people. In John 14, or John 13 and verse 4, page 1417, he said, He rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. This is what Jesus did now. And after he had poured the water in a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. And then cometh to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith to him, He that is walked needed not to save his wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And he and ye are clean, but not all, for he knew that he should who should betray him. Therefore he saith he, Ye are not all clean. So after he washed their feet and taken and, and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me master and lord. And ye, shall, and ye say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily I say to you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye that do them. Serving. How much time do you spend serving others? How much time do you spend serving others? Is our life about self-interest? Is our life about self-success? Are we selfish? Or are we servants? He came, though he was master and lord, to be 
the